This presentation is called the Altruism Equation, or Hamilton's Rule. The sound you're hearing in the background is my dog chewing a bone. What we're interested in is the altruistic corner of Hamilton's universe, which we discussed in another presentation. So how can it be that we can sacrifice to benefit others and in doing so diminish our reproductive success and enhance theirs? It would appear that doing that would be a good way to go extinct. This was a puzzle that Darwin was aware of. It was one of several uh, statements that he made about the, what would falsify his theory centered on natural selection. So in Chapter 8 of The Origin of Species, Darwin notes a special difficulty which appeared to him insuperable, fatal to his whole theory. And this was ants who seemed to assist their siblings rather than reproducing themselves. They assisted their siblings in reproduction and were sterile. And the question was, how could they evolve? Darwin suggested it would have to do with family, that they were close family. And this later became the core of Hamilton's rule. So Hamilton, W.D. Hamilton, was a young graduate student in the 1960s when he came up with this. And his solution was that such altruism can evolve when R times B is greater than C. So what we have to do uh, to understand this inequality is first define our terms. Remember that our interest is in reproduction. So we're talking about reproductive costs and benefits. The B in R times B is greater than C refers to the reproductive benefit to the recipient of the altruistic act. So B stands for benefit, and the benefit is a benefit in greater reproductive success that's enjoyed by the person that the altruists assist. The C refers to the reproductive cost to the altruistic donor. So B is simply a benefit, and C is a cost. This is just a kind of cost-benefit analysis. In this case, the benefit goes to the recipient of the altruistic act, and the cost is borne by the altruistic donor, and these are reproductive costs and benefits. So what's going on here in altruism is the actor being benefited has more reproductive success as a result of that, and the one who benefits them has diminished success. And again, this should seem to predict that the altruistic line will go out, uh, cease to exist, because it's not benefiting itself, it's benefiting others. This brings us to the last term, the R, and this simply has to do with how closely related the altruist and the recipient are. So this technically refers to the coefficient of relatedness, to different measures of relatedness. And there's quite a bit of discussion and controversy about how to best measure this. Uh, we're going to use a very simple calculation. So we can rewrite that inequality and move everything uh, uh, apart from a zero and say that Hamilton's rule is R times B minus C has to be greater than zero in order for altruism to evolve so relatedness is taken and multiplied against the benefit. We then subtract the cost. And as long as this result of that is greater than zero, altruism is possible. So our first step is to multiply the benefit by relatedness between the altruist and the recipient. Our second step, then, is to subtract the cost. 
we're going to use a really simple example to illustrate this. So by the simplest calculation, your daughter has a 50% chance of sharing a new gene, which might be a new gene for altruism. And an important point here, we discussed earlier in the class that 99.9% .9 of the human genome is invariant. We're not interested in that 99.9% .9 here. What we're interested in is how a new gene that would influence you to behave in an altruistic manner could ever evolve. So that's why we do this math in this way. And an offspring is a 50 percenter. They get half their genome from you and half from their other parent. So that means they have a 50 percent chance of getting your gene. Your sister is also a 50 percenter if you share the same parent. So full siblings are 50 percenters. The daughter of your sister, your niece, is a 25 percenter. And to calculate this as we go a step outward from you, we simply multiply by 0.5. And it basically cuts the likelihood in half at each step away from you. So the outcome of this way of thinking is that two nieces are equivalent to one daughter in terms of the likelihood of a given gene surviving. And that might be an altruistic gene. This means that three nieces are greater than one daughter. So let's say that I have a new gene that causes me to behave altruistically. If I sacrifice and it leads to the survival of three nieces who also share that gene, I've done better than if I produce the one daughter, where I have a greater likelihood of helping three nieces survive, of that assisting that gene to be around than if I simply help one daughter survive. So here's the math on this. Remember that Hamilton's rule is R times B minus C has to be greater than zero. In the case of nieces, um, the relatedness is 0.25. The benefit was that I helped three nieces to survive, so we multiplied 0.25 times three. The cost was 0.5. I did not have a daughter as a result of all of my efforts to help my nieces. We multiply that by one. The result of that is we get 0.75 or the sum of the three nieces and 0.5 for the daughter. And when we subtract that out, there's 0.25 left over, which is greater than zero. So that means that that gene can have greater likelihood of surviving through my altruistic actions if I forego my own reproduction and assist others in reproducing I can help that altruistic gene to survive as long as I'm helping close relatives and as long as the likelihood of the gene surviving in my close relatives is higher than it would in terms of my direct offspring So from this we can draw this lesson. You can benefit more from helping a sibling raise nieces or nephews than by raising one daughter of your own. I've kept the gender uh, just focused on the female line here to simplify things. So the bigger rule here, the bigger insight is that genetic interests are greater than our direct offspring. They also include your nieces. They can also include cousins. They can, can include, obviously, nephews. And this is called inclusive fitness. So your direct reproductive fitness refers to how many offspring you have who survive to reproduce themselves. Inclusive fitness goes beyond your direct offspring to also include your close relatives who survive to reproduce themselves. And Hamilton's rule suggested that the key to understanding reproductive success was inclusive fitness rather than simply direct fitness. This came to be called kin selection after an essay by John Maynard Smith. And it's simply the idea that social cooperation and societies can evolve through close kin assisting one another. 
This was one of the key uh, launching points for social biology. This means that altruism among kin, or, or the basic argument here is that altruism among close relatives is actually genetic self-interest. And so this squares with the idea of survival of the fittest and natural selection, that your fitness can be increased through altruistic action when you're helping those who are closely related to you to also reproduce. Based on this, we can draw a prediction, and the basic prediction of Hamilton's rule is that relatedness, actual genetic relatedness, should be fundamental to social life and the emergence of societies of animals, and this should include humans by the Darwinian logic that humans are also animals, and the same principles that we can use to explain social life across life as a whole, we can apply to humans.